everybody, it's Andy from So Camps Europe, back with Paul from the Ski Instructor Academy here in Caprun, Austria, with another podcast. And today we're talking skiing drills, and we're talking about uh, good ones and bad ones, and appropriate and non-appropriate drills. Yeah, I think that's what we said first. We we were going to do this as, as the top five uh, worst ski drills ever, but then really, as we have said many times before. I'm not a fan of ski drills. I don't, I don't move many, if anybody knows my style of teaching, but you have to match the drill with the person um, and the person's level, the person's ability, the person, you know, the terrain, the conditions and everything. Because any ski drill that's fantastic can become a disaster when it's done at the wrong time. And a good one about this is where I see often on the glacier, um, especially in the pre-season when um, certain groups are up there being taught as level one, two um, ski instructors and they've got them without poles, uh, bouncing around, doing some weird thing with their hands and it's a complete whiteout. Mm. And it's like, what are you doing? Like the conditions themselves when you've got a whiteout on a glacier mean that the last thing you want to do is add in more challenges tricky challenges when actually this is a golden opportunity just to talk about proprioception kinesthetics feelings position balance you know this whole concept that you have opens up to you because visibility is being shrunk and now you've got a chance to really address that with your words of wisdom at that point as a ski coach and this is one of the disasters it doesn't have to be one drill whether it be the um, the window drill poles down the hill dragging the poles hip whatever it is they're all crap at that point and um, to me when you have low visibility with what we have when you look at those groups Andy is that tend to be people with about five to 15 weeks ski experience mm -hmm. they do not need to have other things thrown at them mm -hmm. um, and that makes it all all drills become a bad drill um, unless it's appropriate to that whiteout where you're saying, okay, we're going to use the poles as outriggers mm -hmm. to try and feel our way down the hill, for example. Yeah, so it's, you're almost over egging the pastor, aren't you, if you're asking them to ski down doing short turns without the poles whilst clapping the round in poor visibility. Oh, that one irritates the <laughs> hell out of me. For some reason, somebody introduced, and I know it's probably been there for decades, but this sudden clapping thing that they're all doing now when making short turns down the hill, honestly, stop doing it. You look like an idiot because your group can't do it. And even a lot of the ski instructors can't do this clapping thing, which I get it. Great rhythm, timing, flow, whatever. But <laughs> I'm sorry, it doesn't work with the people behind you doing some sort of epileptic dance. <laughs> It's ridiculous. It doesn't even like, it's the most insane thing ever. Appropriate to the level of the guest. You know, you're not skiing with Marcel Hirscher behind you. Like, let's get a grasp of when to do a drill. It's the same with another classic drill that winds me up is the um, poles down the hill. You know, this make an X down the hill or a window down the hill, something because they're doing a short turn and they want to encourage rotational separation, etc. Great drill, perhaps for the minority of people who have no biomechanical issues with their ankle, with their hip, with their ability to have any core stability or understanding of, of rotation within their core, understanding of how the planes of balance work, it can be a good drill. But 90% of the time I see that drill going on, it makes absolutely no sense again to the group that's following. Um, there are far better exercises to encourage somebody to steer, as we all say, from the feet, um, which is a bit of a weird cue, but steer from the feet um, and try to maintain some sort of stability, some sort of directional stability with the body as you do that. And I find that drill, I don't even think I've ever done it. <laughs> which, <laughs> which one, the more appropriate one? Or the, 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 the window down the hill yeah. thing. I've definitely not done the clappy one, but the window down the hill and the, the X thing. 
I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, I might have done a drill like that. Um, again, I, I, I'm not a great favour of drills because I'm able to explain. I'm able to look at somebody and find far more productive ways to get somebody to ski better. Um, Andy, uh, let me shut up. What's What do you think from Yeah, I, f- I think it was quite funny, actually, because you went on a little bit of a rant then. I, um, it, 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 I think, yeah, it's what is the level of the person? What are you trying to teach them and is the drill appropriate for their level then are you on the right terrain for their level and does that drill work on the right on that terrain because some drills will only work on steep and some drills will only work on flat um but do you not find a lot of the time the ski instructor is trying to and i know it sounds weird get something out of the drill as opposed to the guest who is the one that should be getting something out of the drill what i mean by that is the why am i doing this how the hell does it fit back into my skiing Mm -hmm. you know what is the whole picture and story behind this particular concept of this drill and then the one thing that winds me up more than that is as i said 10 times before if not a million times if you start down a road of doing uh, double pole drag let's say I'm going for um, good alpine position or balance on the outside ski then you better absolutely hammer it for the next five days because you've now started down a road where really the one thing you don't want to do is do a run double pole drag put the poles back and go let's go everybody we've now ticked that yeah. particular drill and that's the thing that winds me up most whereas I would develop that drill Every single day for the next five days, I'd be developing it each day at the start of the day, going, right, we're going back to that again. We're now doing it on one leg. We're now doing it lifting the tail. We're now doing it with a hop. We're now doing it, etc. You develop the drill. But most importantly, you have failed. You have failed as a coach. If you turn around on day two or three and you go, can you tell me what we're doing? And they look at you blankly. You should take your stick and shove it somewhere where the monkey puts his nuts because you've just wasted two days of somebody's you know yeah. somebody's time so what i've just done the last week because i had a group uh, they were on their second week of an 11 week gap course yeah so in and, and we, we've also got some people who were on a, a four week course before they start their exam and, and that they were my group the week before and they were on i think their third of four of four weeks so on my group last week, who were on the second of 11, I decided that we would just concentrate on improving their long turns, their dynamic longs. We would also do some basic longs and we would not bring in short turns because they've got another nine weeks. So I've set the scene at the beginning. We are gonna work on long turns. We're gonna work on these aspects of the long turns, getting on the edge early building up our pine basic position, reducing sliding, improving our body position, did it. And that's what we did all week. Now, we started on easier terrain, we built the terrain up, we built the complexity of the drills up. We did end it by the end of the week, going around purely on one, on the outside ski. If I'd started at the beginning of the week, going down Black Mamba, saying, right, we're gonna <laughs> ski on one ski, getting an edgy, an, an edgy, an early, um, edge uh, and the turn and then we're gonna we would have all died you know but I, and i did and and i i would say that if i've got a group who are here for a week i would tackle it maybe differently but the, i say weeks, these guys yeah. are here for 11 weeks yeah. so i didn't have to say right we're gonna do everything um, one week. plow turns plow <laughs> steering long turns and shorts because that's what you've got in an exam in 11 weeks i said nah we're just doing long turns and we did long turns we, we also did some short turns. We went skiing in the powder on Friday and we did a little bit of off-piste. But the main learning element or the main coached learning element, because they also learned from doing short turns, they also learned from going in the powder, they also learned from going in the variables, but the main coaching part was long turns. Yeah. That was it. And this is when, you know, as you as if you're listening at this and and let's say put your hand up if you're one of those guests who thinks a lesson should be you know hammered and splattered with drills now take that hand and slap yourself in the face because the last thing you want to do is have a ski instructor just throwing drill after drill but some guests i hear them say it 
the, the, they literally feel missold if they're not getting 10 drills in a day and not some new ones. And that comes to the concept of something basic like strength and conditioning and training. Everybody's trying to develop a complex exercise that they can put on Instagram and go, do this to get rock hard um, buns or build up your VM by doing this. It's like, just do some squats and shut your mouth you know like or let's get onto one leg stuff whatever it is but people are trying to reinvent a wheel when it comes to ski drills a lot of the times and i feel that everybody's looking for something new like i said this clap your hands and touch your head and do whatever else it's like seriously like let's just ground ourselves back down to the fundamentals of skiing because 99.9 percent .9 of the people that are going to be behind you as a coach need the fundamentals they need the basic strengthening they need to go back to the points that they missed as a beginner because they were in such a hurry to be an expert and that is the issue and that's why i hate ski drills um but then again a lot of what i do you could call it a drill even though it's might just be skiing on one ski and whatever i just want to ask what's vm Ah, was on about the, the part of your thigh. Ah, uh, okay, right. So that's good. Um, <laughs> going back to what we were talking about. Um, yeah, I think and we sometimes say we don't like drills, but if we say to people, we want you to just squeeze the poles, that could be that could be classed as, as a drill. drill. Yeah, exactly. Um, and again, it's funny because... But that's a cue. It's what we call in sport a cue. Yeah. And there are tactical cues. Uh, there are, you know, internal, external. And I think cues are great. Like that is where a coach, you tell that they're more experienced when they start referring to cueing somebody. Um, and now you can look and go, this guy's moved from being an instructor who's read the book and went, ah, to fix X spine or whatever you call it, novel knee, yeah. whatever, I need to get my hand and do this. To fix alpine position, I need this list of drills. If you're still one of those guys that looks down that and starts ticking those boxes to fix things, you are still a very much substandard instructor at that stage. You haven't developed your own rule book. You haven't actually played around with the rule book to say, hang on a second. You know, for the people I'm working with, we know because we teach up to 500 people every year to get to level two, level three and beyond in their ski qualifications. How hard is it, for example, Andy, to teach somebody to plow parallel, for example? Nightmare. Plow mm -hmm. paralleling, right? Yeah. In a normal guest, I mean, this is another thing that you look at in the, the ski instructor progression. Why on earth do we have a plow parallel? We've mentioned this before because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. almost like a, it's like a weird thing to sort of force somebody to do. It's almost they see themselves going backwards. And I think we'll we will pick this up when we talk about one of the later podcasts about parallel skiing. But you could do drills to try and help them. But obviously, these are positional things. I think you're trying to force position a lot of the times in skiing. And a lot of the time, what winds me up in skiing a lot is people don't have the understanding our ski associations don't really recognize how different humans are from human to human and how proportionally different we are. And it really affects somebody's aesthetics com cos cosmetic appearance if you like when somebody's doing a plow parallel or whatever it might be and um, we've said this before about a-framing you know look at any good racer and you'd argue yeah. are they a-framing yeah. you know and then somebody will pull me up and go yeah a-framing and go well so is the best so the most yeah. <laughs> so the best in the world you know sometimes people want to look pretty rather than actually want to ski to the maximum I, yeah. I don't know you know but coming back to the subject of drills andy what do you reckon i mean should we be doing getting the drill book out if they are appropriate to what you're trying to how achieve. do you know if they're appropriate how does a ski instructor know that that drill is appropriate how can we teach our instructors to say hey don't do that you muppet it's it's a whiteout or it's well, or it's raining everybody's miserable i, I think i think that goes down to the uh, the associations and the association and a lot of the people who we see doing the clapping are the people who work for the associations um but i think the associations maybe need to think how do they train and examine the teachers because as we've said before the canadians do it in a very different way where it's focused more on their teaching ability where the austrians it's more focused on your skiing ability they've made it they've made a change recently in austria where to get onto the level four where you used to have to do this pre-exam you've now got to pass the euro test before you go to the pre-exam 
Yeah. So basically saying you've got a shit art racer to go and teach kids in Kinderland, which is another conversation that we've had many, many times. But what I'm saying is they're looking for high-end skiers to become teachers, but then they don't teach them how to teach or how to coach. Um, they just teach them how to ski in a, a particular way. And this goes back to your plow parallel thing. And one of the um, level four trainers has recently posted a, a video of him doing a plow parallel very perfectly, like a robot on Instagram. And it's like, it's all one and good, but... What use is it? <laughs> it's weird because that, that actually popped up in my post. And I don't look at them ever, but I was on... The one with the arrows and yeah. things. Yeah. Um, and I was thinking, how terrible is this? And because it's really going to be difficult for the the audience, that is the average audience, to look at that and understand really how does that fit into me as a, as a skier? What is this trying to show? And interestingly, <laughs> I point the thumb at myself when I say that I know a lot of our instructors and coaches were confused because a couple of our head coaching staff tried to teach them something where they were doing something with a leg in a plow parallel mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, how they stretched the leg out and the, how the, the hip position was, etc. It confused the a lot of the staff. I don't know if you were one of them that was involved in that, actually, or not. I don't know, but some of the other ones were. I don't know if you were here for that coordination. But the issue was annoying to me was not that that set of coaches had done something wrong in the sense of hey trying to get this coaching team to do something very specific and very good for skiing later on great however the coordination was meant to be about teaching then the level one and twos to do a power parallel which it confused everybody then because i don't want the normal level one and twos trying to do that because mm -hmm. the association doesn't want that mm -hmm. and my job unfortunately is often fitting into association blocks and saying basie want this yeah. Cassie want this, the Austrians want this, so therefore I need to make you do the Austrian, you're doing the Bayesi one, you're doing that, and I have yeah. to make sure you're doing the right plow parallel, because there isn't just one here, all of a sudden there's various parts yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. so in, in, kind of worms. <laughs> it is. With, with, with exercises, I think it, we come back to the same thing. They can be great, but as a student, you know, coming in and, and don't... <sighs> Don't judge your ski aboard instructor based upon how many drills he can throw at you mm -hmm. because that's not going to help. Um, yes, you know, a good javelin turn explained well can be very beneficial. Um, good hockey stopping in the right way can be extremely beneficial. Dragging the poles in a certain way with certain explanation, watching for the side effects can be important. A, a good example is there saying side effects. If you think of a tablet, you know, a paracetamol has some great things it can really help you with, but it always tells you the side effects. Mm -hmm. And each drill that you do will have a side effect. And I think you've mentioned this before, Andy, where you said, you know, double pole drag, classic thing to get people to, you know, align themselves properly into alpine basic position, can pull people into the back seat. That is a side effect of the drill, as is, for example, the horrible window drill, short turns, and you see people just moving their arms and going, yeah, my poles still are still there. pointing down the hill, <laughs> but they have no concept over their body. Yeah. This is the final thing I would say from the biomechanical side is that for somebody to actually be able to do a drill really well, they have to have the one thing that I can guarantee you the 99% of skiers don't have. That's control over their body parts their body joints their muscles their ligaments everything because if you're not big into agility coordination style sports then it's highly unlikely you can suddenly be told to do a fence to, uh, a window drill sorry or whatever it's called and to understand am i actually just popping my shoulder internally and externally as i go down here am i actually really just moving my hip forward and back or is my pelvis making a, a rotation you won't know if you're posterior or anterior tilting of the pelvis or whatever because you're just not used to doing those things that is why we keep coming back and saying we get an ice skater or a gymnast or a dancer and they're like wow these guys are great skiers really fast because you can tell them to do something with a particular part of their body and they know where that is they feel that part of the body yeah so one of the lads last week um who at the start of the week i would say was one of the weaker 
ones on his long turns, who ended being one of the strongest. Um, on the second day, his, his body was very much flapping around, let's say. His arms were all over the place, his shoulders were all over the place. And I said to him, I said, dude, you need a bit of core tension. So, tense your core. He did a run, nothing changed. I said, dude, imagine you're gonna crap in your pants. Hold that inside and ski down. Instantly he got core tension. He then built on that through the week. And as I say, he's probably now one of the better out of that group. And that's and a cue. I, uh, yeah, and I could have said, right, put the poles behind your shoulders and yeah, hold pull them down, down, yeah. down or put them behind your back and pull them, which is work, my work, very, my work. Uh, my, my work, but also it's, it's uncomfortable. Yeah. But it was a simple hold in. Hold a fart. Yeah, yeah hold a fart. I actually use poo, but fart. Mm. Same thing. Yeah. 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 And um, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, look, I could rant again, but I'm not going to because I know that we're already 20 odd minutes in. Can you please tell me, am I just a knob? <laughs> because I just <laughs> rant on about ski drills. <laughs> or do you love ski drills? Yeah. Do you find passionately that you get better the more ski drills you do? You know, let us know because... Put it in the comments below. And don't forget, hit the like button, subscribe and share.